Hello and welcome to this Battlefield Explorer video. Today we are in Groesbeek near Nijmegen and we are going to visit the drop zone November where uh, part of the 82nd Airborne Division landed. Welcome to drop zone November. These fields here were all part of it. Uh, there were no pathfinders on this drop zone. The only pathfinders for the 82nd were on drop zone Obu, Oscar. And once the plane spotted the pathfinders there, they would know, they would see these massive open areas. This drop zone was the destination of the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment. And the 505th comprised of three serials. A uh, serial was 45 Dakotas that took off from an airfield. And um, something went wrong here with those serials. Serial A3 was supposed to be the first to land, to fly over the drop zone and drop their paratroopers. But something went wrong at the initial point, a navigation beacon that was near Vught. And uh, serial A5 accidentally took the lead by turning north early. And uh, so it happened that serial A3 and serial A5 arrived over the drop zone simultaneously, which is a recipe for disaster. Luckily, this was noticed by the lead pilots of serial A5, and they decided to drop their paratroopers, the 2nd Battalion of the 505th, on the other side of Groesbeek, on drop zone Tango, uh, which is just following this road. So landing here on this drop zone was the uh, 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, the Division HQ and a Jetberg team. In total 2,281 paratroopers were dropped, of which 2,151 were from the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment. The precise spot that I chose to shoot this video is here because it's in these fields directly in front of us is where General Gavin the commanding officer of the 82nd Airborne landed and he had a very rough landing and he hurt um, uh, his back he broke two vertebrae he kept his mouth shut he didn't want anybody to know that he was in severe pain because he knew that if he let anyone know he'd be taken he'd be taken into hospital and then the division would be taken out of his hands so he wasn't really into that. After the last paratroopers had landed this field was used to land gliders. Around 50 Waco gliders landed in the area around us. Um, the gliders they carried a battery A of the 80th anti-tank and anti-aircraft battalion which were had eight 57 millimeter guns and nine jeeps to tow them. A recon platoon with four armored jeeps with uh, 50 cal machine guns on them. One of those was lost and never made it to the drop zone. Also uh, in the um, gliders were Division HQ, Artillery HQ, Signals Company, Phantom Detachment, Air Support Signals Team and nine Dutch commandos from number 10 Inter-Allied Commando. And there were also two war correspondence, one from the BBC and one from Associated Press. On the next day, September the 18th, these fields were also used as a landing zone. 122 Wacos were supposed to land here on the drop zone, but in the end 150 landed here. They were mostly artillery and uh, medical engineers, Jeeps for the 505th and 508. Only the fabrics missing. The dimensions are the same. So this is where you'd be. The um, US gliders, uh, they were manned by a pilot and no co-pilot. So what usually happened was that the pilot said, okay, who has any experience in flying? And if anybody raised his arm, um, he would be the, the instant co-pilot. And if nobody had any experience, there usually was a volunteer who said, I'll do it. He'd get some instruction. And uh, then if the pilot was it, he was the one in charge. 
well that wraps up this video thank you very much for your time i really hope you enjoyed it leave any comments in the comment section and please like and share if you enjoyed this video and uh, we will be back for more soon have a great day thank you and bye bye